he is going crazy, dude. I'm saying it. All right, let's talk about the most egregious crime of all. Okay. I talk about it being Kamala half-time. Harris and Tim Walls talked about tacos, music, and the future of America. And boy, did the Republicans get mad at this. Holy f***. This is 1.3 million views in one day. In America, we're a touchdown down. And I kind of like the idea of being a little bit behind. Uh, well, I'm looking at Coach Walls right now. <laughs> I'm looking at Coach Walls. I have white guy tacos and what is like that? black. Like mayonnaise and tuna? What are you doing? Pretty much ground beef and cheese. That's and okay. Do yeah. you put any flavor in it? Uh, no. Oh. Um, here's the deal. <laughs> no, they said to be careful and let her know this, that black pepper is the top of the spice level in Minnesota, you know? I'm the first. This is like the lightest, the absolute lightest type of like white humor that you can engage in, okay? It is like, this is like one step below being like, white guys can't dance. It's two steps below, white guys can't jump. Okay? Like, it is literally the most inoffensive thing you can say about white people. Ironically, yes, literally about as spicy as black pepper. Okay? And also, Tim Walls is a white guy. So what the are these guys saying and doing crazy that a presidential candidate can just casually let us and blatant, blatant anti-white racism and nobody cares imagine if donald trump said a black guy taco was made with fried chicken and watermelon and nuclear meltdown oh my god oh that's so good i f love that dude that is awesome that is awesome it's great he is this is something that I'm so familiar with personally from all of the anti-white racism that I've demonstrated time and time again. The type of people that look at that innocent statement, okay? The type of people that look at what Tim Wall said, a white guy, and then act like they are offended are so so extremely rare that they are even rare online okay like this is lsf shit okay this is like trying to brigade a subreddit because uh you're deeply offended by someone using the term cracker which by the way those exact same communities have over and over again turned around and defended a white person saying the n-word mind you and those orbiters of said communities have also defended that principle as well. <laughs> Excuse me. The most offensive thing you can do is say cracker, but when a white person says the N-word, then, you know, as long as they're not saying it in a hateful manner, it's fine. Just, you know, that is an unimaginably rare phenomena. I love this, okay? This is firmly within weirdo territory. This is when you are huffing your own farts so much. You will not be able to find a white dude in the wild genuinely offended about this. Okay? You will not. This is a phenomena only online. Because if you were to take this out to the marketplace, okay? If you were to take this out to the market and try to run a national campaign with this, even the most racist white people would look at you like, what the f are you saying, dog? What the absolute f is coming out of your mouth? You're telling me, you're telling me, honest to God, that you are offended that a white dude said he has a white guy taco. Matt also did a video about this. Anti-white bigots, Kamala Harris. Yes. And oh, I'm going to, oh, so good. Hogwatch is so on. Oh, it's so on, dude. It is so goddamn on. And Walls put out a, a very weird video yesterday. They, they sat down and, I guess, pretended to have dinner together or something. And I don't know what the point of the video was, but I guess the point was to show us that, oh, they're real people, just like you and me. Oh, look, they're eating a meal. I eat meals. 
Oh. Oh, I'm in a nut. The white guy taco thing triggers all the trauma associated with whiteness. It is not okay. <laughs> exactly. Dude. Oh, I love this so much. I love this shit so much, bro. It is so... It is such manufactured outrage over such a nonsensical thing. It's like... Oh, thank you. Thank you for doing this. It's something that I have had to withstand on this extremely online circle of the internet on a regular basis, okay? And I'm glad that they're testing this narrative out in a larger marketplace because most people will look at that and go, you're a weirdo dog. Why the f do you care? Stop crying. You are the biggest bitch I have ever seen. You're the biggest bitch I've ever laid my eyes on in my whole life, dude. Oh my God, dude. I, they're just like me. I should vote for them. This is what I'm, this is the quality I'm looking for in a leader. I want to know that this is someone. No, nah, I keep crying. It's funny. Me? Oh yeah. One who eats food. Gaia. Come but, here. um, so I get, I, maybe that was the point. I don't know. Gaia, but but here's here. the video that Tim Walls posted to his social media accounts. You've been absent yeah, all day, ma'am. Please. Like I have white guy tacos and what like that black mean, like mayonnaise and tuna. What are you doing? Pretty much ground beef and cheese. That's and okay. The, Do yeah. you put any flavor in it? Uh, no. Oh. Um, here's the deal. <laughs> no, they said to be careful and let her know this, that black pepper is the top of the oh, yeah. spice Please. level in Minnesota, you know? I'm the first vice president, I believe, who has ever grown chili peppers. I'm you trying know to expand my, we'll uh, my food knowledge. You know, we've got some cantaloupes. Season. You'll be fine. Yeah. Um, okay, so... Now, most people seem to be focused on the fact that this is uh, so awkward and fake and lame. But but I'm more focused on the, the serious matter that I'm about to deliver to you, which is that an egregious crime has been committed. The worst crime of all time. I, Matt Walsh, a man who has on occasion defended white people saying the N-word, which, by the way, he has, okay? This is not, like, unique to um, extremely online debate perverts like Destiny. Uh, who has also done a similar thing, the identical thing. Matt Walsh himself has also done this. I'm sure you guys have that tweet, okay? Uh, Matt Walsh's tweet, I mean. <sighs> it is phenomenal that this man who has, as a white guy, defended white people saying the N-word is now going to sit here and posture and act like he is offended that Tim Walls is making a meme about white people not handling spice. Okay. But everyone's skipping over the more important point, which is that a presidential candidate just casually dropped anti white racism in the middle of what was supposed to be a lighthearted video. You know, Tim Walls says that he makes white guy tacos. And Kamala says, What is that? Mayonnaise and tuna? Like, that is anti white racism. Here, um, let's hear, wait, let's hear what, uh, what, what Matt has to say about the N word. And it is, again, a decision that nobody, no one can logically or morally defend. You know, the idea that there's a, that there's a word that cannot be uttered under any circumstance is completely insane. And it is not something that, there is no other word in the English language. He's not wrong. Stop being a, stop being such an echo chamber to your shit. Kisses to you, Chatter. Thank you for being the lonely, the lonely wolf in here who will defend what is right. Okay? Thank you. You're right. I am the echo chambered one, not you. A guy who will say anti-white racism is out of control. This was something that was tried leading up to the Trump campaign. Okay? It didn't work. Everybody, everybody dropped it. It was like every single person that did the, like, white people are under attack, whites are under attack, anti-white racism is the real problem, all the way back in, like, 2016, are now, they just have inoperative YouTube channels, okay? Inoperative YouTube channels, we're talking, like, Stefan Malnier, like, rugged white nationalists that lost their careers at this point because they just fell out of favor. But thank you. Thank you for doing the honest deed. Except Asmongold... <laughs> I don't know. I guess 
<laughs> An anonymous gifter, thank you for the sub. Or any other language in existence that we have those kinds of rules for. Someone has to speak up. I don't agree to everything, but it's so f that everyone hates everything. Someone's got to defend white people, man. I'm sick and tired of it. Any other, there's, there's other words that are slurs. There are words that, are, that we would consider vulgarity and profanity. Um, and all kinds of words that I don't say on this show uh, because we try not to use profanity and vulgarity on the show. Um, words that I don't think you should use. Words. To be fair, Asman doesn't say white people can use the N-word. He just says anti-white racism is a big problem. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Asmund doesn't go to that length, I don't think. ...that you shouldn't use around kids and so on. There's all kinds of words like this. Um, but there's no other word that we would say, well, under no circumstance at all can it even be uttered, even in, in, in the context of quoting somebody. And certainly there's no other word where we would say, well, judging on your skin pigment, if it's this shade, you can't say it at all under any circumstance. But if it's a little bit of a darker shade, then say it all the time, and it's totally fine. So there's no context where it can be said over here. There is no context where it can't be said over here. And we are going to decide that based on how dark your skin is. Makes no sense, and I think we all are aware of that. I love that, dude. I, I Just say it then. Fucking say it, bro. Why doesn't he say it? He said it is immoral and illogical for white people not to be able to say the n-word <laughs> oh it's so sick yeah it's it's awesome anyway that very same guy is now genuinely upset he's so upset he is the most upset why why because white people are under attack thank god Jaden tv is in here uh, he is going to defend uh, white people's the the white race. Okay, he's going to defend uh, the white race. Oh, he put his wait. Is it the same shirt he's wearing? No. Oh my god. Oh no, it's not the same shirt. It's a. <laughs> it is very similar though. Why does he have two shirts that look almost identical? This is his like <laughs> white people should. This is his white people should be able to say the n word shirt, and this is his. White people shouldn't be able to make fun of uh, white people's shirt, okay? V two very different shirts. That's what that is. And if you don't believe that, right, if you, if you think that it, I'm overstating the case, all right, well, just imagine it the other way. Imagine a black guy says to Donald Trump, I make black guy tacos. And Donald Trump says, oh, what is that, like fried chicken and watermelon? Maybe sprinkle some Kool-Aid powder over top. Yeah, he's trying to, dude, this is so funny because this is fun for him. He's like, he, this is a way for him to think that he has permission to be racist in this regard for simply a thought experiment, you know? Oh yeah, black guys, they love fried chicken and waffles. Oh, like that's, that's literally all this is. Okay. That's literally all this is. Oh God. Oh, so good. Every instance, every time there is a white person who is defending white, the white race, okay, which is a socially developed phenomena and has expanded. What means to be white is expanded throughout time, okay? It just means the in-group with proximity to actual power, okay? If you want to know more, watch my YouTube video where I say white people do not exist, okay? It's like a 15-minute video. You'll, you'll figure it out immediately. But every single time, every single time, there's a white guy defending the white race and talking about anti-white racism, they always have to tie it back to how white people can't be racist to other races is f***ed up. That is the real problem, okay, for them. Am I right? How do you think everybody would react to that? What do you think the reaction would be? Nuclear meltdown, literally. I mean, they would probably shoot... A, a nuclear missile at Donald Trump for that. They would execute him via nuclear attack if you were to say something like that. I mean, the outrage would be so immense. We would never hear the end of it. The question is, would you be mad at that? Considering that you came up with this on your own as a thought experiment, it seems like you wouldn't be mad at that. So why are you mad at this in the other way around? Are you just simply mad at the hypocrisy? Is that what it is, Matt? 
Because I'm pretty sure you would defend it. I don't need to even, you know, suspect that you would defend it. You're literally voluntarily bringing it up in this hypothetical. I'm offended. Which historical context do I point to argue my case of this being offended, offensive? Uh, Anti-white racism. White people have been... <laughs> White people have been lynched throughout history and enslaved for their taste buds and the fact that they don't handle spice well. This is a real phenomena. Yeah. And it's kind of f***ed up that you are not even recognizing that. The, 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 the date of this black guy taco comment would be remembered. It's called being a minstrel and it's deeply offensive. He's leaning into these stereotypes. A non-white like yourself wouldn't understand the history. Yeah. <laughs> Tim Wallace being a min doing a minstrel show. He's shucking and jiving for Kamala Harris. It's really up. This is really up. You hate to see it. You hate to see it for Kamala Harris's non-white self to enjoy the show. Yeah. Remembered by the media forever and memorialized like, for years after, they would solemnly refer to 816, right? We'd have January 6th. Do you remember 816? I remember where I, where I was on 816. The day of the fried chicken and watermelon taco. Dude, what are you talking about, dude? Donald Trump has said, like, insane shit over and over again about black people. Like, what do you mean? <sighs> like, he just built up a hypothetical... And now he's just so invested in like this hypothetical causing uproar. Like Donald Trump literally goes on stage every day and is like literally every Mexican you've ever laid eyes on is a rapist monster. Okay. Every Guatemalan is only trekking thousands of miles across multiple nation boundaries specifically to come here to rape your white daughter. And he's like, what if Donald Trump was hypothetically racist? I mean, they would use a nuclear weapon to kill him. Like, what are what planet are you living on, dude? He literally popped off at the National Association of Black Journalists by starting off with Kamala Harris, a black woman, is not really a black woman. She turned black. Like, that's what he started off with, okay? What are we talking about? There are less moments where Donald Trump is not being racist in a campaign stop than there are moments where he is, okay? What do you mean? This literally said immigrants are poisoning the blood of the nation. That is just pure Hitler. It's not even Hitlerian. It's just Hitler, okay? Like, he is quote-tweeting Adolf. He is basically ripping Adolf's lines, bro. And you're over here being like, wow. Imagine if Donald Trump was racist, an unimaginable reality for me. A guy who defends Donald Trump's racism every day, okay? Oh, joke. Uh, they would be weeping in the street. They would build, they would build statues and, and memorials to the lie. Oh my God, he's still going. He's still going. He was lost because of the taco joke. KFC and, and Kool-Aid companies would come out and denounce Trump over this. So would every watermelon distributor in the country. And we all know that. Man, this is, what a riot. <laughs> this guy's <is> funny, man. <laughs> That's three uninterrupted minutes of him now going off on this tangent. It, it, this, is, this is another one of those things where, like, there are people that are going to clip this. They're going to take this clip of me saying that the comment from Kamala Harris was anti-white racism, and they're going to try to present it as though it's just, like, on its face absurd. And yet even they know that what no, it is. It is absurd. You already know it's absurd. I'm saying is a thousand percent true because you damn well know that that comment the other way, it wouldn't even be a discussion about whether. Yes, dude. Yes, of course. Of course it, it is like one is racist. The other one is literally not even a pejorative, not even dismissive. You are the Lulu, my man. You are out of your goddamn mind. Okay. Doors open. Holy whether it's racist. It would be considered the most racist thing a president has ever done, including the president. You know what's funny about this? Donald Trump is so racist. If he made it like a like a waffle, a, a fried chicken and watermelon joke, it wouldn't even be in like the top 10. Like, what the f are we talking about? And to own slaves. And um, that's in spite of the fact that the watermelon fried chicken trope for black people is actually significantly less racist 
than what Kamala said. Because black people have a reputation for liking fried chicken and watermelon because that's something that actually does come out of black culture. Black... He is lit, dude. He is lit. He is going crazy, dude. What the f bro, bro, it's like the it's like the clown meme when you're like when you watch the guy step by step putting on clown makeup, but instead of clown makeup, step by step, he's putting shoe polish on his face. Like he's just painting his lips. Like he is step by step literally getting more and more like he's doing blackface <laughs> it's just every step of the way oh my god dude he's <laughs> bro bro he said <laughs> this hypothetical scenario that i made up in my mind where donald trump is like making jokes about black people loving uh fried chicken and, and watermelon is actually not even as racist as Kamala Harris saying <laughs> Kamala Harris saying white people tacos, which is a thing. Okay. It's the most racist. Actually, uh, imagine if Donald Trump would say the N-word. Okay. Imagine with a hard R when referencing a black person. Okay. Now imagine that. Now that wouldn't be racist. <laughs> That wouldn't even be anywhere near as racist as Kamala Harris and what she just did, the crime that she committed. <laughs> actually, I just realized, imagine if he said that. I would like that, actually. I, I think that that's not racist at all. I really would like him to say that. Sir, please say the N-word with a hard R, please. Please, sir. <laughs> Why won't you say it? You would really be proving a point. <laughs> oh, my God. I the fact that the watermelon fried chicken trope for black people is actually significantly less racist than what Kamala said. Because black people have a reputation for liking fried chicken and watermelon because that's something that actually does come out of black culture. Black, black comedians make jokes about that kind of stuff all the time. Um, <laughs> what the f Bro. Oh, bro's arguing like a, like a 12 year old, you know? <laughs> You know how like 12 year olds would be like, what do you mean? Why is that? Why is that racist? <laughs> Why is that racist? Don't you like watermelon? How is that racist? <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, this is like the sweatiest, grossest, grimiest. Oh, this is the worst, dude. It's so stupid. It's like not even a thing that Trump said, by the way. Remember, this is an argument that he started making. Okay, <laughs> like this was his own hypothetical. <laughs> oh, the brilliant, brilliant dude. This guy is awesome. He's just cooking for real. Wow. <laughs> I don't get it. Black people make those jokes all the time. Okay, Tim Walls is making a, a white guy joke as a white guy. Why are you bent? This is crazy. Look at how mad he is. Oh, this is so awesome. I think there's nothing. I, I look, I understand the historical relevance as to why, like the historical context of violence and subjugation that uh, that comes along and is a reminder when you say the N word. And that is the obviously good reason as to why, you know, non black people should not say the N word. But honestly, even if it didn't exist, if it pissed off the likes of Matt Walsh, to not be able to say it, I would still be on board with not being able to say it. Like, even if there was no chattel slavery, no history of that whatsoever, and for some random weird reason, uh, everybody just collectively decided non-black people can't say the N-word, just if it pissed off Matt Walsh this much, I would still be on board because it's awesome, okay? It is so, it, it's so great. In his mind, there is no relevance. In his mind, that is the reality. He just thinks like the N-word is just mean words, okay? He just genuinely thinks, like a lot of racist white guys actually think like, I don't get it. Like, why are you so offended? It's just a word. Why are you so offended? It's just a word that makes you feel bad. Like, that's it, okay? They, like, they don't comprehend it. 
they don't comprehend like the historical significance of it. I mean, I, I think many of them do. They're just like being silly and arguing like this, but it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome that he is this bent out of shape, dude. Wow. We should do it more if it makes this guy mad. Yeah. I love, like, you guys know this already. I'm a white guy, and I personally love anti-white racism as a white guy. It's like one of those things that's, like, uh, completely inoffensive. No white person actually gets mad about it. It's awesome, okay? It, it's, it's funny. It's, like, kind of a cliche, mostly tropes that are just, like, uh, relatively light. You know what I mean? But the fact that it makes some of the worst people in society this upset whether fake or for real it's just icing on the cake okay change that reality for some reason but here i'll give you more historical examples whiteness being a political concept and one that has expanded throughout time if you go far back in time you will recognize that benjamin Pr franklin famously considered even germans to be not white here here is the passage the swarthy germans passage from benjamin franklin i read this yesterday why should the palatine boers be suffered to swarm into our settlements and by herding together establish their language and manners to the exclusion of ours why should pennsylvania founded by the english become a colony of aliens who will shortly be so numerous as to germanize us instead of our anglophile you missed this look? You're delusional, dude. Come on, I look so much better now. Anyway, um, hey, yeah. Do you think this video was part of the they are weird strategy? Yeah, the strategy is them trying to prove how weird they can get. That sort of joke comes from a place of recognition and affection, really. Like, it's not, it's not offensive. There's nothing offensive. Fried chicken's great. Who doesn't like fried chicken? Um... Yeah, it's, it's on the level of, like, making a joke about how Asian people are good at math. It's, like, yeah, it's stereotypical. They're not all good at math, but it's not bad to be good at math. It does come from a place of, like, a lot of them are good at math. Uh yeah, all of, this, all of this ultimately stems from Matt Walsh just, like, wanting to be racist and being upset that he can't be racist because of some, like, secret societal reason and then continuing to just, like... <laughs> bring up stereotypes of every race <laughs> it's awesome he's just like oh i'm just doing it in a hypothetical i'm doing it as a hypothetical i'm doing this as a hypothetical you are not white you ain't a white guy we are brown another thing you are not white no one sees you as white okay dude <laughs> this is the classic phenomena the huckleberry finn phenomena okay that's what this is this is a this is a classic white guy thing to do okay white people love looking for like a theoretical scenario where they can just like talk about uh talk about different like racial stereotypes <laughs> thinking that like nobody nobody realizes that like nobody realizes what they're trying to do <laughs> yeah no it's great man thanks um and that is also that's the kind of thing you listen to an asian comedian they'll make those kinds of jokes on the other hand, the mayonnaise thing for white people is it's purely spiteful and hateful. There's no, it's not, there's not any kind of affection in it. There's not any kind of recognition. It's this is literally, oh my God, this is like, oh my God, this is the destiny argument. This is literally the destiny argument. Aren't they all Kamala Dick riders now because that's the Democratic Party's choice? I wonder how they feel. Do they feel, I wonder if they feel conflicted because like this is bar for bar the same argument. Oh, Kamala Harris is an anti-white racist, just like I am an anti-white racist, and I put some stink on it when I'm actually talking about white people, and I'm actually being offensive to white people, like deliberately offensive to white people, which is more racist than being like regular racist as a white guy against like black people or Asian people. This is amazing. Like verbatim, bar for bar. It's not something that actually comes from white people or white culture. White people don't actually have any special affinity for mayonnaise. There's not any, like, that doesn't, it doesn't come from, you talk to white people, they're like, you know what, I love mayonnaise. Doesn't happen. Um, it's not a thing. The, the mayonnaise trope, it, it comes from, like, the most spiteful corners of black Twitter. Yeah, you know, this is, that's where you'll find those kinds of jokes. What? They'll refer to white people as the mayonnaise people, that kind of thing. I mean, it's real. it's, it's a. Okay, first of all, let's be real. For, I, I mean, I, I, is a very white trope of mine but like I, I like mayo and like no white people do love mayo like that's crazy for sure okay for sure like I don't know why he's over here being like oh the mayo trope where did that come from it must be some of the most spiteful corners of black twitter 
Yeah, dude, black Twitter invented the joke that white people like mayo. So, <laughs> if he doesn't mention that Tim Wallace is Somali by the end of this rant, I'm going to lose it, okay? That is, you just let that one slide, dude. I'm going to be pissed, okay? The reason that black people are associated with watermelons is because former slave owners were smearing freed enslaved people who had taken the growing watermelons to sell. Yeah, it's also like uh, a part of the racist cartoonish depiction of black stereotypes as well. So anything that is associated with that is obviously still going to have that same similar like white supremacist resentment. Like that's it. That, that's where it comes from. You know? It's a dumb insult. It's really stupid, but it, it's, it's quite like spiteful. It's just like a hateful, we hate you and don't like you kind of joke. Um, so it is an insult that some black people came up with to make fun of white people. It's not good natured or friendly or grounded in any kind. Dude, he's literally just butt hurt. He's such a pussy. Oh my God. He's such a little baby, dude. He just said all stereotypes for all non-white races are true and good and valid, except for white people in Mayo. Oh my God. He's such a bitch. Kind of affection or recognition at all. So what Kamala said is worse. Like, it's significantly worse. And yet it barely raises an eyebrow. This is the greatest five minutes and 52 seconds I've watched of Matt Walsh. I want this so much more. I want, I want more of this. I want to see him, like, get mad at other, like, anti-white racism moments. Like, it's awesome. It does. They have... Whatever. Um, and this is from 1241 p.m. today, and it's got 1,000, 1,000 likes. Do you understand? It didn't even hit in his own audience. Like, he could have just said trans people are weirdo pedophiles for six minutes, and it would have gotten like 30,000 likes. That's how. Even in his own, even in his own community, it didn't hit. Oh, it's so good. He would have got more likes if he said the N-word. That's amazing. That is awesome. Yeah. Cries for six minutes. Matt, Matt Walsh. No, I'm not. Ah, I'm sure I'll do it. Fuck it. Why not? It's amazing. I love that. Yeah, Tim Walls is the one who said white people tacos. Kamala Harris asking about white people tacos having mayo and tuna. We love MLA APA styling with the quotes outside the period. You got it. But well, I'm going to delete it. Because there's no, it's not the end of the sentence. The best part about this is that he's starting the whole thing uh, by saying, nah, -uh, they're the weird ones. Yeah. Like in the state of Florida, a group of, of Florida Floridians call themselves the Florida crackers. Okay. Um, most people in the real world, most people in the real world have never actually been offended by the term cracker. It's not a real thing. Speaking of and, and I suspect that Matt would consider that, that to be like the peak of, of obviously anti-white racism. And I get that. I, I understand why you get tired of pointing it out. But what's the other option to just let it go? Dude, he's doing he's doing silence is violence. I didn't even realize it gets better. It gets better, dude. What? I don't know if you saw my message. I appreciate not getting banned. I don't know much. I don't watch many sources of U.S. politics except you and different daily news channels here in Sweden from an outside perspective where the U S a major part of the prime indicator of how the Western world will move forward. It feels like you guys in the U S can't in some ways unite somehow. We're all going to be soon, Bro, what does this have to do with that? What the fuck if anti-white bigots are friendly or grounded in any kind of affection or recognition at all. So what Kamala said is worse. Like it's significantly worse. And yet it barely raises an eyebrow. It does, they have, whatever. Um, and the double standard on these things is so pronounced and so obvious and so in our face and, and so pervasive that even a lot of conservatives get tired of pointing it out. 
And I get that. I, I understand why you get tired of pointing it out. But what's the other option? To just let it go? Yeah, don't ever let it go. No, Matt, please don't ever let this one go. Please make this the the peak. Please make this the peak of your political commentary. You should spend every waking moment being an advocate against anti-white racism. I can't let it go. I'm not going to let it slide. Like, someone has to point it out. The other option is to just allow it and be okay with it and pretend that it's not happening when we all know that it is. And that's not an option that I find especially, uh, you know, it's, it's not something that I want. I, I, that, that, I don't know. Yeah, this uh, chalk this up for another reverse 2016. This is another one of those reverse 2016, reverse identity politics. Just a reminder. Um, just want to point that out. We are now in reverse 2016 territory once again. I don't, I don't find that preferable, that option. So for what it's worth, I have to point out that's anti-white racism from Kamala Harris. It just is. We all know it. Everyone knows it. Go ahead and deny it. It doesn't matter. You're a freaking liar if you deny it. No, I'm saying it is anti-white racism, and it's awesome. Like, it's good. That's what I'm saying. That, that, that was my take. I'm Latino, and I like mayonnaise. Is that racist? Yeah, you, I mean, you're, you're white. That's how it works. Yeah. The real anti-white racism is at the top of the hour when I serve all the white chatters a three-minute ad break, except for when they subscribe and they don't see the three-minute ad break at the top of the hour. Okay? But, yeah. That is what is going on. There was an episode of What Would You Do in the Utah about interracial couples. White people didn't like the black boyfriend, but said Mexicans are white, so they're fine. That's from 12 years ago. Holy shit. Yeah. Here's a three-minute ad break now, dude. I'm doing anti-white racism. You already know, baby. All right, let's watch this Vice now. President, I believe, who has ever... Trigger warning. Well, anti-white racism chat. Trigger warning. Chili peppers. I'm well, trying know, to expand we'll my, uh, my food knowledge. You know, we've packets, got some cantaloupes. Season. You'll be fine. Yeah. So... I, called I was hoping you, Tim. maybe we wouldn't have to. I called you, Tim. <laughs> yes. You didn't answer, Tim. I know. I know. The, uh, <laughs> what happened? The most important call of my life. It popped up, and we didn't recognize the uh, the caller ID, and it went to uh, it went to voicemail. Hi, this is Jim. I'm not able to answer. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Tim. It's Kamala. I really want to talk to you. <laughs> It is an amazing privilege for me also. Uh, I'm excited. I just want to be part of the excitement that you're generating. Well, we're so. doing it together, buddy. It's fine. We're doing it together. How have these last couple of days been for you? I can see where the, the energy comes. America is a hopeful country. Indeed. People are excited. In every one of those groups of thousands, sometimes over 10,000 people, you've seen exactly who we are as America. Yeah. People from rural areas, urban areas, of every stripe and size and background. This is who we are as America, and we're yeah. all in it together. Yeah. And in this campaign, the only way we win is to keep the pedal to the metal for these next many, many days that we have. So, Tim, yeah. what's your relationship to music? Yeah. For me, <laughs> the transformational piece of music was Bruce Springsteen's The River, okay. which is a journey. You know you know all the tracks, yeah. and, and, and I'm that guy. My first car, it's the summer 1980, been uh -huh. saving up. I buy a 1973 orange Chevy Camaro, got an eight-track player in it. Oh, wow. Previous owner left Bob Seger's Night Moves in there. I listened to it, and it's kind of the soundtrack of my life of, of uh, Detroit's own Bob Seger. But what's really great about this is I have a 79 International is my car. It's got an 8-track player in it. I have the very 8-track to this day. You're kidding no, me. And no, but how about you? I grew up, you know, so all these albums here, I mean, Aretha. My mother had every Aretha album, and, like, our Christmas gift to my mother, her birthday gift was always like, what's the latest Aretha Franklin record? So it's on on vinyl in your house. Like, as a all record. of it. Wow. All, that and Stevie. And... Mm. Then Miles and my dad loved jazz, and so it was Miles, it was Coltrane, one of my personal favorite music. Okay, this is so boring. I actually don't care about any of this shit. I only care about the, the anti-white racism. Am I crazy? I, I, like, I don't really care for this at all. You missed this? She called him the C-word? Yo, no way she did. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, that generation of men, pretty stoic. 
after he died, my mom was a stay-at-home mom. Uh, she became our rock, and mm-hmm. now she had to go out and get work because the medical bills broke her. And Social Security and Social yeah. Security survivor benefits. <laughs> We're fine pulling ourselves up by our boots. This is the lady that runs the Stop Anti-Semitism account. This woman, this woman called me an anti-Semite of the week at a certain point, chat. That's a real thing that she did. Goddamn. Well, turns out she's got her own problems, you know? That's your white seeping out. Don't care about a single historical black musician. No, I don't care about a single historical white musician either. I just don't care about music. <laughs> I'm the worst guy to say that about. It's just, I, I'm an equal opportunity hater. Oh, this is the other part. White people who think green chilies are spicy are mad. Walls pointed out white men don't like spicy. 1010 great community note. That's another part of this equation that I forgot. Um, this isn't cute. Walls is being used like a clown to mock white people. If Walls doesn't like the spicy food, that's fine. But it has nothing to do with being a white guy. It's like a minstrel show lampooning white Midwest stereotypes. Yes, it's a stripping of human dignity movement. Incredible. Uh, there was more. There was more here. Hold on. See, folks, it's so funny that white people hate spices. Not racist at all. Just funny. Fact check. Europeans like spices so much that they literally got involved in several hundred years of war. Fact check. Europeans like spices so much that they literally got involved in several hundred year wars in order to determine the control of the spice trade. Yeah, the whole joke is that they never use it in their goddamn food, dumbass. That's the whole point. That is literally the joke. I can't believe he did a fact check. Again, not hitting, bro. Not hitting. 3.9 thousand likes. It ain't hitting, big dog. This shit is not even hitting on Twitter, which is the everything app, okay? I have a massive issue. What is this? With the sun being white and being a Turk, I'm a pale Indian and I ain't white no matter how white my skin is. Most white people don't even know what turmeric or cumin is. Yeah, I mean, that's what's like funny about this, obviously, is like what they were fact checking the shit. And apparently some of the fact checks included, some of the fact checks included people posting his goddamn recipe. Okay. Uh, Tim Walsh has like a recipe for like a pot roast or whatever. I don't know, some like white guy food. But uh, in it, Apparently, he uses onion powder, garlic powder, and chili peppers. And they were like, they literally were like, bro, see? He lied. He uses peppers. He uses actually spices in his food. And it's like, oh, here, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Oh, my God. 700 whole likes, bro. Not hitting. The Moss's turkey taco dish hot dish recipe. Yes, he's even lying about spices. The spices are paprika, chili powder, onion powder, garlic powder, bro. Are you serious? That's the most basic introduction. What do you mean? Like, what the f- Like, it, it's already a joke. It's already a joke. But people are like doubling down on the joke. Oh, this was the other aspect of it that I thought I, I found very funny. In her latest campaign video, Kamala Harris wrongly claimed to be the first vice president to ever grow chili peppers. Thomas Jefferson was growing them in 1767. Uh, now, if I'm a white dude, Okay, and I know Ben Jacobs is, uh, I think, British originally. Uh, You know, pick a struggle. But if I'm a white guy uh, doing news and commentary in the United States of America, I probably wouldn't be bringing up uh, the founding fathers and, uh, you know, growing crops in general because I just don't think that they were doing that, like, personally. You know what I mean? And you probably shouldn't ever try to invoke, like... It's something that most people, it's something that most people, you know, don't like to think about just, you know, with respect to people like Thomas Jefferson, you know what I mean? Just think, just think, man, think anyway, whatever. It's fine. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Yo, you look at this fact check in the replies. Yeah. Was he growing them? Yeah, exactly. And then. Thomas Jefferson growing his chili peppers. Like, bro, I don't think Thomas Jefferson was growing his chili peppers. I'm just, you know, just moonshot. <laughs> don't think, don't think that that was happening. Anyway. Um, well, everyone's been wondering where she is. Like, why doesn't she talk to the press? Why isn't she giving the sit-down interview to some 
agency, to some news agency, and um, we want to hear more about her policies. She, if you go to her website, there's nothing. I'm not going to watch the whole thing on John there. Oliver video. Apparently, she's rolling out this economic policy today. People are curious about what she stands for, even though we know her voting record. But she hasn't sat down in 26 days. But she did release a video of Tim Walsh. Oh, so there is an interview. They're interviewing each other. Oh, fantastic. Watch a little clip of this. I have white guy tacos and what like is that? black. Like mayonnaise and tuna? What? Dude, am I crazy? I could watch this like, I could watch this all day, bro. I swear to God. Like, I, I could watch. I could watch Republicans get mad at like anti-white racism all day. It's so fun for me. What are you doing? Pretty much ground beef and cheese. That's and, okay. Do yeah. you put any flavor in it? Uh, no. Oh. Um, they said to be careful and let her know this, that black pepper is the top of the spice level in Minnesota. Black pepper? Well, but why is Kamala an expert on tacos? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, Good point. That, that's my, your takeaway? I ain't going Yeah, there. I mean, like, she's, she's dunking on him about tacos. Yeah. Right. What is she? I mean, I don't understand her Will expertise is so on desperate tacos. for some unscripted moments. And then he's, she, he's and she went with, what? He's white. Did she say white guy tacos or tuna and mayonnaise? Well, he that said, wasn't the he worst said white part. guy tacos. And, and then she, she said, said, what, what is, is that? that? Tuna and mayonnaise? Tuna and mayonnaise, She yeah. couldn't even really get to what album she really likes and why. She just says all of it. They talked about music. He says he's Bruce Springsteen. She said Aretha and uh, Miles. And all she gave a few. Yeah, then they <laughs> talked about cars. She owned an orange Chevy Camaro. That was his first car with an eight track. And so they, it was just a, it was, we learned nothing. First of all, you, you can't say, I mean, the producer's like, no issues. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going exactly, to get to the no issue. issues. But it's, but it's also, it doesn't make any sense. You don't say Aretha Franklin and say all of them. You don't put the greatest <laughs> <laughs> or Miles Davis and say, yeah, all of the artists as well. It's like they're the greatest for a reason. But again, even when she has just simple human moments where Wait, she should be it? able to go back and forth. She's not natural. She's just terrible, Everyone on man. social media was saying this was fake, this was scripted, this was phony, and they said you can't do interviews, so you have to talk to each other. Oh, they want to create chemistry. These two were born to uh, to run together. Can I just confess, though? <laughs> Dude, the less that they do interviews, the more these guys are just, like, trying to grab on to anything and everything. Like, this is just, like, normal campaign shit, man. It's supposed to be, like, an introduction to show that, like, the, the vice president and the president uh, presidential candidate are, like, just fucking vibing like normal people. I don't understand how they're, like, this upset about it. Especially when they're not getting upset about the anti-white racism as much. Like, please keep yelling about that. That was that's unfortunately the difference between that's unfortunately the the difference between like the Ben Shapiro and the Matt Walsh types who are online. So they will at least like have to say something about anti-white racism versus like most of the fucking I guess more normal conservative commentators who were just like, yeah, whatever. This is lame. She was like, you would have been my friend. We grew up in the same neighborhood. I'm like, no, y'all probably would not have been. <laughs> from a political she was a cat, standpoint, she from Canada anyway. I get why they're not putting her out. Like, for You only like it because it doesn't affect you? What do you mean? What doesn't affect me? I don't understand what the point you're making is. Um, yes. A, 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 a strictly, yes. If, if you don't care about the it press was holding people it was awkward. accountable, like, keep her keep her away from the cameras. It, 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 you ever, have you ever seen all the stuff about LeBron James carrying books out and posting yeah, press Yeah, and it's always on the first page. It's always page. on the first page, and then you ask LeBron, what's your favorite part? And he's like, all the parts. All of it. All the parts. <laughs> you you <laughs> can't do that. Is that what she's doing with, like, who your favorite music is? Aretha? <laughs> she just really doesn't them. know. All of them. It's just, it's just an <laughs> endless thing. All right. right. Well, if she said, if she didn't have any that were favorites, that would be weird. Yeah. And you just doesn't want to be Don't weird. Don't say weird. That's, yeah. that's apparently the Trump uh, campaign. Yeah. And, and it's the Portland and Austin slogan. Yeah. Keep Portland weird, keep Austin weird. Yeah. So I just thought that whole weird thing, it's, it's I don't weird. get it. It's weird. I don't get itself. it. Me neither. Right. Because I thought, it, especially that party, the nose rings, the purple hair, the pink, excuse me, <laughs> right. pink hair, I thought you were supposed to accept everybody. Right. Right. And all yeah. of a sudden, it's like, I, I don't like this guy <laughs> because Ron Howard did a movie on his life. And it's, He's weird. It's, it is the same answer Trump gave about the Bible, yes. He's Book weird. was a bestseller for three years. <laughs> He's weird because he's wearing... I love how they're not actually playing the video because they're afraid people think Kamala and Tim are actually kind of normal. I know. But it's, it's much better. It's much better for them to just uh, defend LeBron right now. Dude, LeBron doesn't need any defending from these people, okay? 
wearing a, a navy suit. Right. <laughs> no purple so hair. Weird. Yeah. No, yeah. No tongue when, piercings. Right. When uh, when normal is weird again. That yeah. should be our slogan. Maybe we'll change it. Right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart.